Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos. And a special thank you to those who have subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate it. The channel continues to grow because of people like you. And if you have not done so, go ahead and take the time to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell so you are notified whenever we put out any new content. Doing that really does help out a small YouTube channel like me to spread the word. On this channel, we cover dividend growth investing. And I believe that dividend growth investing is the fastest way to financial independence, financial freedom, retiring early, getting out of the rat race, the nine to five grind that most of us are in. And again, if you are interested in that kind of content, hit the subscribe button down below and join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. I do portfolio updates like this every Sunday morning. We did add $1,715 into the portfolio, so we will cover exactly what we bought with those new funds. We will cover any dividends paid out, any options that I've been in for the week or the weeks previous, as well as a stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday, where I cover a company mm -hmm. stock that is pulled back on the day to see if it is potentially showing any value. So again, if you are interested in that kind of content, hit that subscribe button down below and join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vest Industry community. Let's jump right in. It is December 17th, and I hope you are having a great weekend and wrapping up 2023, getting ready to head into 2024. Happy holidays to those of you who are already uh, enjoying the holiday season. I will have a little bit of time off around Christmas and then around New Year's and whopping two days in between the two, I've got to work. I didn't take the time off. A lot of my uh, teammates and uh, team members are taking that time off. So I will be at work uh, right after Christmas for a couple of days. Hopefully you do not have any time between Christmas and New Year's that you are working and you can enjoy a nice long holiday week off. Well, let's jump in. We'll see what we added here to the portfolio with these new funds. $1,715 added to the portfolio. And we will start off with some updates on the options we had been running here. We had uh, five contracts, uh, SBSW, which is Sabaney Stillwater, covered calls, a $5 strike price that expired on the 15th. These were assigned, called away. The uh, I think it was like 517, 516, somewhere in there is where we ended the week. So these uh, 500 shares of SBSW were called away. We received those funds at $5 per share. So we did lose about 17 cents per share on each one of those. That is one of the downsides of covered calls or options. They can be assigned or called away. And even if it's above your strike price, you only get the strike price, right? So I will run a wheel on SBSW. I think I've actually already put it in the system for January, this is another one that I was doing uh, some tax loss harvesting on, right? Down significantly on this position, yep. up significantly on others, and a lot of dividends and options received this year. So I want to kind of decrease my taxable income for the year, and I'm willing to take the loss on this one with the idea that I will buy back into SBSW, uh, run this wheel, do five more contracts with a cash secured put, will be the next part of the wheel, right? We did a covered call because we owned the shares. Next will be a cash secured put since we were, uh, those were assigned and we have the cash now. We'll collect that next bit of options premium, but I have set these out uh, for next month in January. So it will be on the 30 days. So we'll be able to utilize this loss that we incurred as part of our tax loss harvesting stra strategy. Bank of America was another one that I had called away uh, several weeks back now. Uh, so I've been running very conservative cash secured puts on these below what I think the strike price is going to hit with the idea that eventually I will rebuy into Bank of America at 200 shares. Now, this has run up quite a bit around $33, $34 per share. It looks like it's pulled back a little bit on Friday, but we will continue to run this wheel as well and collect that options premium. So we didn't get any options premium for either one of these. They just hit their expiration date of December 15th. So the SBSW was assigned and the Bank of America, the two contracts here for a $30 strike price expiration date, December 15th, these expired worthless. So we kept that options premium and we will continue to run these cash secured puts. So next week, if, if someone bites on the options that I throw out, you should see five contracts for SBSW cash secured puts and two more contracts for Bank of America cash secured puts. And we'll see if anyone bites on those, what options premium we might get. 
Now we jump into the first dividends paid out of the week. We did receive dividends on December 11th, early in the week. Valet, ticker V-A-L-E. This is a mining company out of the material sector. They paid us out $108.49 total. And I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know why Valet broke this up. I mean, they paid out on the same day. You can see that, why it broke it up into two tranches, but $108.49 total in dividends received did add six dollars and four cents in passive income but it broke it up into two payments here seventy six dollars and twenty eight cents which went right back in we do have the drip set so anytime a company pays out dividends it goes right back in and buys more shares of that company so this part of the hundred eight dollars and forty nine cents this seventy six dollars and twenty eight cents went right back in and bought five point two three two four seven shares of valet and the remaining $32.21 went right back in and bought 2.20946 shares of Valet. All total, about 7.4 more shares. And that is that dividend snowball in effect, right? We already had capital that we purchased Valet shares. Those shares paid out dividends. Those dividends went back in and bought more shares of Valet. And those new shares added additional income over the next calendar year of $6.04. That is the dividend snowball in effect. As it grows, you add capital. The, that capital produces dividends. Those dividends produce more capital, right? That is the dividend snowball. And the other part of that dividend snowball is if Valet increases their dividend payout, that will increase that snowball a little bit further. And we did have a lot of dividends received this week, December 13th, Haverty Furniture Companies, ticker HVT. This is out of the consumer discretionary sector, paid us $93.60. And that $93.60 went right back into Haverty Furnitures and bought 2.8825 more shares of HVT, which added another $3.45 in passive income. And we weren't quite done with dividends received. We received pretty close to $400 in dividends this week. And we received $125.90 total on December 15th, which breaks down Next Area Energy, ticker NEE. This is a utility company out of the utility sector. Paid us $76.52. Those funds went right back in and picked up 1.22218 shares of Next Area Energy. And the monthly paying REIT Realty Income, ticker O, out of the real estate sector paid us $49.38. That went right back in and picked up 0.86376 more shares of realty income. Not quite to one full share yet, but getting pretty close of realty income. Again, this is a monthly payer, so this pays out 12 times a year. And these new shares here between NextEra Energy and Realty Income added an additional $4.93 of passive income over the next calendar year. Now we get to the new capital added. We did add $1,715.68 total to the portfolio. And those funds added to quite a few different positions in the portfolio that are existing. We didn't add any new positions this week. It's all just building out existing positions. Starting with Nutrien, ticker NTR. This is out of the material sector. This is also a Canadian company, so there are some tax implications around this one. My particular brokerage takes the taxes, the foreign taxes out. I'm an American citizen. I'm not a Canadian. So they take the taxes out right away for me. I don't have to worry about this later. You check with your tax advisor or your brokerage account and see how they handle foreign stocks. Valet was another one I should have mentioned above that my uh, particular brokerage takes the taxes out right away. It's a Brazilian company, a uh, mining company down in Brazil. So again, there are some tax implications around foreign companies. Nutrien is one of those. But for our particular purposes here in conversation, we added four more shares of Nutrien, ticker NTR. We picked up those shares at $54.85. This one's a little bit below my cost basis right now, so I'm going to continue to add to this one probably in a two to four tranches a week for you know the foreseeable future while it remains under my cost basis and build out this particular position, decrease my cost basis, increase my dividend yield, and increase my potential future returns. Pfizer is another one significantly below my cost basis. This one just seems to continue to get hammered. So I'm going to continue to nibble on it. We added six more shares of Pfizer, ticker PFE, out of the healthcare sector at $26.56. My cost basis is about $10 higher than this. So another one that I probably will continue to add, you know, six to eight shares a week bringing down my cost basis, building out this position. Very nice dividend yield on this one right now. 
Johnson and Johnson, another one in the healthcare sector. And overall, the healthcare sector is really getting hammered right now. Bristol Myers Squibb, several other companies in the healthcare sector are really getting hammered. So I'm going to nibble. And even though Johnson and Johnson is my largest position in my portfolio, I just can't pass up Johnson and Johnson at these prices. Adding one more share of ticker J and J at one hundred and fifty four dollars and fifty three cents. Procter & Gamble, another one that's starting to pull back. It's a little over my cost basis, but it is definitely within my buying parameters. So we are going to continue to add to this one, probably two to four shares a week over the next several weeks. So long as it stays down, I would actually like it to drop back into the 130s. And I'm really hoping that it continues to drop as I add to this one as well and build out this position. I'd like to get this to 100 shares similar to Johnson & Johnson's just over 100 shares. Procter & Gamble is one of my positions that's under 100 shares right now. So I'd like to get this to 100 shares, build out this one. We added two more shares of ticker PG out of the consumer staple sector, $143.19. Cisco Systems, we added five more shares there, ticker SYY out of the consumer staple sector as well. To build out this one, finally hit 100 shares there. We added those shares at $73.57. I may be done on this one. I may nibble a little bit if it comes back down under, you know, $70 per share. Right now it's a little over my cost basis. So I'm comfortable leaving it alone if that's the case and focusing on other positions like Procter and Gamble and Pfizer that are significantly under my cost basis. But we did build it out and finally got it to 100 shares, so we can back off that one if it stays above my cost basis. We picked up those shares at $73.57. And last but certainly not least, we are trying to build the Kroger position out. This is the most recent addition to the portfolio. Newest position, we added 12 more shares. Ticker KR, another one out of the consumer staple sector. So you can kind of see where I'm seeing value. The material sector, I'm seeing some value. The healthcare sector, I'm seeing some value. And the consumer staple sector seems to be pulling back right now and is showing some value. Again, this is my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. You can see other uh, value in the market in other areas. Uh, if that's where you're seeing it, this is just where I'm seeing it right now. So we added those 12 shares of Kroger at $44 and two cents, which was just under my cost basis of, I think $44 and seven cents. I'd, I'd like this one to pull back as well. I'd love it to pull back into the 43, $42 range where I started adding to it a couple weeks back here, uh, and decrease my cost basis in this one as well as I build out the, the position all total here. The $1,715.68 added and these new shares that those funds bought picked up $54.52 more cents in passive income over the next calendar year. And this passive income, along with all the dividends paid out this week and the new shares bought from those dividends, added $68.94 in additional passive income over the next calendar year. Now let's take a look at the sector weights and see how the overall pie is looking right now. Communications is making up 8.93% of the portfolio currently. Consumer discretionary sitting at 2.04%. Consumer staples sitting at 10.26%. Energy makes up 6.44%. Financial sitting at 9.18%. Healthcare, the largest slice of the pie at 16.84%. Industrial sitting at 8.17%. Technology makes up 7.89% of the portfolio. Materials is just in second place, slightly over REITs. Utilities makes up 5.12% and REITs and real estate sitting in third place here at 12.44% of the portfolio. ETFs, I consider my overall portfolio, my ETF that I am building out. I am not against ETFs. I just don't have any in my portfolio currently. I do have some in my daughter's custodial accounts. I should do a video on my daughter's custodial accounts and kind of go through what I have there. But I do have SCHD in their portfolio as well as VWO. And I'm looking to add VUG. I'm really hoping that there is a bit of a rotation in the market right now. Uh, and I can get VUG, which is really tech heavy, at a cheaper price. So I'm, I'm looking for uh, companies like Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, some of those fly high tech companies that have really run up this year. I'd really like a pullback there and I'll see VUG at more of a buy-in price. Right now, it's just a little bit over my cost basis. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking for a pullback on that particular ETF to add it to my daughter's custodial accounts. And ETFs are a great way to set it and forget it or index funds. If you're not interested in doing the research on individual companies, go ahead and find an ETF that works for you. I would recommend something like VTI or VOO. 
which is the overall stock BTI being the overall stock market and VOO being, you know, the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 is really when you hear people talk about the market, that is the market everyone is trying to beat. So be invested in a company that is the market, if that's what you and then just be a basket of the top 500 companies for VOO and for VTI would be all of the uh, companies in the American stock market. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, where you can just dollar cost average, dump money into it every week and not have to worry about it, go with ETFs or index funds that track the S&P 500 or the overall market. That would be my recommendation. And here it is. I show this every week right out in the open. I know some YouTube channels don't. They talk about their portfolios, but you never see what's in them. That is not the case here. I want you to see a real portfolio, how a real life, you know, everyday human being, American who works, goes to work every day. I have two kids. I'm married. You know, I'm the typical American family man here. I build out my portfolio. I do not have a, a, a individual doing it for me. I'm not paying someone a service to, to build out my portfolio. I'm doing it on my own. You can too. Don't be uh, intimidated by the market thinking that you have to be a professional trader or have a background in finance or have gone to college for this. You know, if you can, I, I love some of uh, Warren Buffett's and Charlie Munger, rest in peace, Charlie Munger, who recently passed. Uh, some of their quotes about if you can, you know, if you can do math and you can do just a little bit of research and, and understand companies and stay within your uh, knowledge base, what you understand. You know, if you're a construction worker, look at companies in the construction field. If you're a healthcare worker, look at companies in the healthcare field. Stay in sectors that you really understand. You too can build out a portfolio. It doesn't have to be a dividend portfolio. You might be a growth investor. That's fine too. But you do not have to have a professional do your investing for you and pay for those fees. Right. A lot of people think that is the case. <clears throat> that is not the case. You can do it if you are willing to take the time and patience and consistently invest week over week, month over month, even when the portfolios drops. And that is another reason for ETFs. If you are the type of person who can't handle right, you see some of these green here uh, or, or the red, I mean. If you are the type of person who couldn't like SBSW, for example, who couldn't handle a 41 percent drop in their stocks, Go with ETFs and then just dollar cost average in every week, right? MPW down 38%, right? That doesn't bother me. Eventually, I believe this company is going to turn around and head back up. And while it's down, I add a little bit to it over time to decrease my cost basis here. So if you can't handle those types of drops, definitely stick to, you know, just index fund or ETF investing in dollar cost average every week. There, there's not as much volatility in those type of funds uh, compared to some individual stocks. But here's the ticker. These are all the positions in my portfolio. Here's how many shares I currently hold. Current, well, and I will talk about, let's talk about that for a minute. Bank of America, for example, shows 298 shares, but I'm running the wheel on it. Currently, I'm holding the cash for two, I own 98.566 shares, and I'm holding the cash for 200 more shares. Same thing with SBSW. Since this was recently called away, these 500 shares, I actually hold currently in my portfolio, 79.55 shares, but I hold the cash for these other 500 shares. And I plan to add these 500 shares back in over the next 30 days. Same thing with Bank of America. I'm going to add back in these 200 shares. I'm going to hold that cash until I buy back 200 shares. And then that'll probably be done with that wheel and go to another position that I'm looking to add to the portfolio. So this might be a little bit misleading, because I don't currently have 579.55 shares of SBSW in the portfolio. I have 79, but I have the five the cash from the $500 that we just sold or 500 shares we just sold. Same thing with Bank of America. So I just wanted to touch base on that. The current price of the uh, companies as of the close of business on Friday, current market value as of the close of business on Friday, my average cost per share my purchase price, so this is how much I have into each position, what my total return is, whether I'm up or down. Obviously, if it's in the red, I am down. My percent return, whether I'm up or down, and I am still, so uh, the uh, the other thing with that, SBSW, I'm still showing that I'm down 41.04%, right? So even though I technically don't have those 500 shares and I'm not technically down anymore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to realize this loss I am still showing it as a loss right now until I buy back these 579 shares. Again, 
percent return, whether I'm up or down, if I'm in the red, I'm down. If I'm in the green, you know, you can see real dark green, I'm really up. Light green, I'm up a little bit. You know, 23 H HVT is a recent position, already up 23.45%, right? Uh, sector, what sector the companies fall in, whether it's a quarterly, monthly, semi-annual payer, current dividend yield as of the close of business on Friday, my yield on cost, and you're going to start to see this yield on cost as these stocks really start running up again like they have the last week or so you're going to see the yield on cost flip so the current yield of the overall portfolio is only 4.576 percent but my yield on cost is actually slightly higher than that right because a lot of these i bought before they ran up hvt for example let's look at that one my yield on cost is 4.2 percent I was buying it back here in the, you know, $28.57 is my cost basis. So I was buying it a lot cheaper than where it currently sits. So the current yield on HVT is only 3.4%, but my yield is quite a bit higher because I bought it when it was much cheaper. So that is the idea behind the yield on cost column. Even though my a company might run way up, it shows you what your funds are actually uh, returning based on your initial investment overall and this will change over time if i add to hvat it would make this go up as hvat pays out dividends it'll make this uh this go down i mean slightly uh, but that's all right overall the idea is to have a higher yield on cost over time than your current yield and that will just naturally occur as these companies grow over time portfolio weighting as we saw on the previous slide i showed each sector weighting this is each individual holdings weighting in the portfolio i don't like any one position to be over 10 percent. some of them are getting close johnson and johnson for example i just added one more share so brought us up to 108 shares there it makes up 8.5 percent of the portfolio so at some point i'm gonna and i know i keep saying this at some point i'm gonna back off this it's getting close to that 10 percent kind of threshold that i keep same thing with any sector. I don't like any one sector to be over 20% of the portfolio. So I will monitor some of these that are getting close and back off. You know, if I get over 9%, I would probably look to back off Johnson & Johnson. Estimated annual income in this column, payout months, what months the companies pay out in in this column. And I like to look at this so that I can kind of keep my portfolio, my payments out as I'm looking for, towards retirement. I want to kind of get an equal amount of money a month because that's how my bills are going to be. My bills aren't going to be one big, huge set of bills one month and no bills the next month. I mean, your bills are probably the same way. You're going to have utility bills coming in. You're going to have grocery bills coming in every month. If you have a mortgage, that comes in every month. So I, I keep uh, track of the payout month so I can kind of keep these weighted a little bit, you know, equal payments, not completely equal, but close enough for January, March, and February where I'm getting a nice chunk of change every month. Here's the dividend growth year over year in this column and where the company sits at 15% of its 52 week low. I use this as a kind of a gauge of where I want to cut off. Um, I set up a discounted cash flow analysis to where I, I see if I want to buy a company and what price I want to buy it at. And then I take that price and compare it to where it's at at 15% of 52 week, week low. And when it hits my strike price and is within 15% of 52 week low, then I jump in, right? Uh, let's look at HVT as an example as well. We will use this one again. My cost base is $28.57. It currently my is 15% of its 52 week low is $28.59. So I sit just below 15% of its 52 week low and I will no longer add to it because it is not only above my cost basis, but it is above where 15% of its 52 week low. So that one would be out of adding to the position. Whereas uh Let's look at another one that might be a little above. Let's look at SYY. This might be a good example. SYY, my cost basis is $68.18. 15% of its 52-week low is $71.57. So it currently sits at $73.52. It currently sits above where it's 15% uh, of its 52-week low. But since my cost basis is so much lower, if I was to add, let's say, another 5, 10 shares here to SYY, it would not bring my cost basis above 15% of that 52 week low. So I could technically still add to SYY, even though the current price is a little above 15% uh, of the 52 week low. I hope that understands. Drop a comment down in the, uh, or a question down in the uh, comment section if you don't understand that. I'll try to explain it a little further. But this just gives me a gauge where I don't want my cost basis to go above 15% of its 52 week low. 
So I kind of monitor the three, where, what his current cost is, what my cost basis is, and where it sits at 15% of its 52-week low. And I don't want my cost basis to go above this number. I've kind of set that as the benchmark for what I'm willing to have as a uh, average share cost. Now let's get to the totals. 5,743.086 current total shares. Market value of $197,790.14. I have $194,728.63 into the portfolio. I currently am up $3,061.51 or 1.57%. Let's talk about that for a minute. I do not care about this. I don't care that I'm up. Just like for the past several months, I didn't care that I was down. I'm not cheering that I've made $3,000 in profit just like I wasn't freaking out whenever I was three, six, nine thousand dollars down. This goes up and down. That's what I want to show you with this portfolio week over week, month over month. That's why I show this out in the open. This is going to fluctuate. The market's going to go up. The market's going to go down. Don't concern yourself with the fluctuations of the market. I look at them as buying opportunities. When I see a company run way up like this, Williams and Sonoma up 68.85%. Yes, that is nice. But I'm not looking to sell Williams and Sonoma. So that means nothing to me. Unless you are selling the shares, you are not getting this 68.85% profit, right? You only lock in gains and you only lock in losses when you sell the shares. I am a dividend growth investor who's holding for the long term. I'm not looking to sell shares unless I'm doing something like the SBSW where I'm, I want to uh, capture this loss to decrease my cost basis for tax loss harvesting purposes. Or if a company's fundamentals have changed, right? If the company is fundamentally not the same, right? They, they're going through sales are declining or the company goes through a hostile takeover or a merger or their revenues decline or their debt gets way out, out of control. Then I would look to trim a position. But overall, I'm not looking at this and saying, oh, I'm up 68.85%. Let's sell and get those uh, gains so that I can see 68.85%. I can get this $245 that I've made or $168 that I've made in profit. I'm not looking to sell anytime. So this doesn't mean anything to me. What I'm focused on is over here, this number. Current yield sitting at 4.576%. My yield on cost slightly over that at 4.6848%. And like I said, this right here, that's why it's circled in red. This is what I'm focused on week over week, month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. The passive income, the estimated annual dividend income paid out by all the positions in the portfolio continues to grow again week over week, month over month, quarter over quarter, sits at $9,051.49. And, and again, if you pay attention to the, the, uh, the channel, you'll see this number has grown consistently week over week. Sometimes it drops down a little bit whenever we sell out of a position. Again, if a position doesn't meet the criteria, Whirlpool, for example, got way out of control on its uh, uh, its payout ratios, it was paying well over 100% of its free cash flow. So we sold out of that one and our dividend uh, estimated annual income dropped for a couple weeks until we built back other positions. And that's fine. But overall, quarter over quarter, year over year, this continues to grow. And this is eventually what is going to provide that financial freedom for me. This is eventually will pay all my bills. This will be what I live on and what allows me to retire this cash machine that I am creating. Current dividend growth year over year sitting at 7.34%. And that is really it for this one. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help out a small YouTube channel like me. It really does help grow the channel. The more that you subscribe, the more you comment, the more you like, the more you share the videos. Hit that thumbs up. All those things help with the YouTube algorithm to spread the videos and spread the word that dividend growth investing is the best way to financial freedom, at least in my opinion. Hopefully your opinion as well. That's hopefully why you stopped by the channel and you are here. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So if you have any questions, any comments, or have a suggestion for the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below. I'll respond as I can. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you're having a great weekend. Happy holidays, and we will see you in the next one.
I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and cancer's money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.